Hello, welcome to episode one of our History Music Podcast. Today, we will be talking about the origin and characteristics of colonial music. So, I know what you may be thinking, music is pretty hard to talk about for a long time, but we thought music would offer an interesting topic for our first podcast. Although music, colonial music especially, is not a commonly talked about subject, it was important in shaping early colonial life. An example of how colonial music shaped early colonial life was the song Over the Hills and Far Away. This song served as a recruitment song and a military march song, so obviously it served many uses during the colonial era, especially the revolutionary era. That's right. Colonial music was music that was brought to America from other countries. Most of the music had British roots. However, not all the music was British, with music inspired by songs from England, Scotland, Ireland, Germany, Italy, France, and even Africa. America at the time was a very diverse society with slaves and immigrants from other European countries, so obviously the music had diverse roots. Uh, many instruments were used to create colonial music, though people used instruments that were available to them because instruments at the time were pretty expensive, poor people and people who didn't own land couldn't afford violins and other high-priced instruments. Ob- obviously rich people could afford them just fine. Gender differences were also very evident when it came to music. Men and women usually played different instruments. Men mostly played violins, and rich landowners made their slaves play for them. Um, violins were commonly used by men as well as fiddles, fifes, recorders, and flutes. Women mostly played harpsichords to quote-unquote maintain their reputations. Trumpets, trombones, cellos, violas, oboes, and bassoons were also played within the colonies. Music was divided up into four categories theater, dance, church, and military. They all had different, like, uses, different places where they were played. So, um, theater songs were primarily performed at operas. This music used a variety of instruments such as violins, oboes, trumpets. Dance music was performed for entertainment, so at home, and this also primarily used violins. Church music was performed at during religious ceremony ceremonies and events. This music primarily used organs. And finally, military music was performed during military marches. This music was played by musicians who were hired by military officers. This was used this music primarily used drums and fifes. This music was used to entertain the soldiers or uh, prepare them for marches. It also excited them, especially t- in times of maybe war. It created a more energetic atmosphere for the soldiers to help in their performance. Some examples of important American music are Old Hundredth, The Willow Tree, Michael, Row the Boat Ashore. So these songs offered, like, these songs were pro, were, sorry, pre American Revolutionary Era, so they offered a sense of carefree adventure. We actually also know important songs from the American Revolution that again energized America as a whole, but especially the soldiers. Some of them were the British Grenadiers, Yankee Doodle, and Free America. Um, as you can see, these songs were very anti-British, but they were also patriotic. Um, even songs sung during the War of 1812 had an anti-British sense with titles Sinclair's Defeat, The Noble Lads of Canada, and British Parliament. So, American songs were a result of what major historical event was happening at the time, and they were heavily influenced by external events. As you can see, Sinclair's Defeat, that is a title that is um, connected to probably a battle that happened, and The Noble Lads of Canada refers to Canadian involvement Hello, welcome to episode one of our History Music Podcast. Today, 